Hi, my name is Alex. And I'm Andrew, and welcome to another episode of Car Show Television. show television. You know, we're here today at the Amstel Collection uh, in Boca Raton, and Barry Amstel was kind enough to open his doors and um, show us what really amounts to be an incredible collection here of not only exotics, but other classic American collectibles. Uh, it was a great day shooting here today, wasn't it, Andrew? Oh, we had a great time, and I mean, he's got a really incredible collection of some really neat cars, and we're looking forward to sharing it with you, our audience. My name is Barry Amstel, and I'm, I'm here in Boca right now, where we're filming at, but uh, originally I'm a Pennsylvania boy from up in the country. Um, we're here looking at my cars today, and I'm, I'm quite pleased that you, you're willing to, to come and look at them with me, because that's something I really enjoy. You know, I, I had actually a, a, a two-fold reason for making this little man cave. I collected some, some artwork and I needed a place to keep it. It was getting more than I had room for in my home. Uh, I also had a desire and a passion for automobiles. And I had uh, a need to, to keep those as well. So the two came together and that's what you're gonna see today uh, as you look around in, in my little man cave. Uh, right here, we're standing by a 550 Marinello Ferrari. Uh, this is kind of a gentleman's race car. It's a 12-cylinder, near 500 horsepower, uh, six-speed uh, touring automobile, I guess is what they would call it. Uh, these cars came with uh, their own luggage, usually, and uh, and just a lot of spirit, a lot of fun to drive, and, uh, and, I, and I enjoyed this car. It's very similar to the car that's alongside it, which is a... Uh, an Aston Martin Vanquish. Uh, it, it actually is, uh, again, a V12 engine, uh, a little over 500 horsepower. As an F1 transmission, which is very similar to the, uh, the, the cars that they would use in F1 formula racing. Uh, it's a six-speed geared transmission with a, uh, a full integrated clutch system that operates off hydraulics and, and electric solenoids. And the gear, gear selection has changed like and a lot of the automatic transmission with the little paddle shifts, except when you push that lever, it makes a gear change in 40 milliseconds, actually disengages the clutch, selects the gear, and then re-engages re the clutch. Do you love the fabulous 50s? Then you need to meet Car Show Gene. Car Show Gene has been serving South Florida for more than six years with their event promotions, featuring the absolute greatest in classic cars. So whether it's a private event like birthdays or anniversaries, or a corporate event for your business, Car Show Gene has several packages available. Serving Palm Beach and Broward County, call Car Show Gene at 561-704-0669 or email her at fab50party at comcast.net. Hello, welcome to Brandt's Automotive. We're a general repair shop specializing in antique and classic cars. We do all sorts of repairs. We've been here for 28 years. We've worked on cars from the 30s all the way up to modern and present day cars. And we specialize in personal service to our customers. And we try to do everything in a one day service. In and out the same day so that you get your cars back and you don't have to rent.
south of that one a little bit is a, a, a Jaguar. Uh, it's known as an XJ220. There were very few of these cars made. Originally, the des design was uh, for a supercar uh, back in 1988 for the Paris Auto Show. Uh, a bunch of the, uh, the engineers at Jaguar on their own on Saturday afternoon uh, designed the car and uh, it was known as Saturday Afternoon Project. They built the car in time for the 88 uh, Paris Auto Show. Uh, the car was very well received. Uh, the, the, the name of the car is an XJ220, as I said. The name was derived from the, uh, the design that they were trying to achieve, which was 220 mile an hour. Uh, they were going to sell for about three quarters of a million dollars. It would take about a quarter of a million dollars worth of deposit to order one. That was naturally all in pounds, knowing the British. Uh, it took over two and a half years to design and finish the car for, uh, for sale. And by the time they did that, they had lost the V12 engine, which originally was in the car because of, of weight and horsepower. And the all-wheel drive system also had to, to go by the way. The car became a, a six-cylinder twin turbocharged uh, two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive car. And it also had uh, gone up another quarter of a million dollars. Another car was near a million dollars, uh, which naturally, as you might expect, started all the lawsuits. Uh, th this car was number 37, which was one of the first cars produced and was part of the lawsuit. So 70-some uh, some of the cars were put away in a, uh, in a warehouse in England until the lawsuit was settled in 2000. Uh, I wound up buying this car from a gentleman in California. The car was never marketed in this country, uh, but a few cars were brought here as gray market automobiles. Uh, the engine, uh, uh, uniquely for, for Jaguar, is a mid-engine design, so the engine actually is aft of the, of the cockpit area and sits in, in the middle of the rear portion of the automobile. Twin turbocharged, uh, a specially designed hand-built V6 engine. Uh, just to the to the right of this car is another historic car, which was the uh, the, the GT40. This was Ford's marketing design of their GT40 back from the 60s, uh, and was a car they produced for two years. Uh, this car they made a, a little over 4,000 cars. Uh, originally, they told the vendors they were going to produce between four to 7,500 cars. At the end of the first year, Ford had lost so much money producing this, this uh, marketing uh, ploy that they decided they were going to cancel the, uh, the, the rest of the cars that they were going to produce. At that time, they were told by their vendors they were going to be sued because they had geared up to make at least 4,000 cars. So Ford did make the 4,000 automobiles uh, and produced a, a, a 2006 automobile as well. This is, this is one of the original cars. They're all exactly the same automobile except for color uh, and a, a very few uh, options. The stripe was an option, it was about $5,000. The radio system was about a $4,000 option and the, the wheels again were about a $3,500 option. Uh, the colors were, I think, about five or six colors and then the very famous Heritage or Golf race team colors which everybody has probably seen, which are the, the blue and orange uh, version of the car, which was about a $1,500 or $15,000 option on the car. This engine uh, in this car was a 4.4 uh, hand-built aluminum uh, Ford V8 motor. Uh, it's a supercharged, uh, actually a mid-engine, uh, six-speed transmission. Uh, the car has uh, actually been uh, clocked at over 212 mile an hour, uh, which made it a, a pretty, pretty formidable race car, and a lot of these cars are used in competition even today. We have one of GM's uh, favorite little cars that they came up with, which was their 63 Corvette. Uh, it was the only year that they made in this body style, which is, is the C2 style, uh, a split window. Uh, if you walk around to the back of the car, you'll see that there is a, uh, 
a bar that runs down through the sloped back window of the car, which gave it the name, the split window. This car is, is unique, and as most of my cars in the collection, that what makes them unique is there were very few of these cars produced. Uh, this car, being a fuel-injected car, uh, even though there were over 10,000 coupes made, uh, there were very few of the fuel-injected cars that were made or kept uh, originally fuel-injected because of the fuel injection system was very touchy and was very hard to keep operating in good condition. Uh, I've been able also to collect just a lot of eclectic things from from uh, little model cars to uh, uh, to gas pumps and pedal cars and, and a lot of those types of things. I've been very fortunate to uh, to be able to to find these types of things and, and be able to afford and collect them. Uh, there's a few more cars that, that uh, I wanted to show you. Uh, the, the Corvettes, not to, not to miss this one, is the, uh, this, the, the grandfather, I guess you would want to call it, of the, uh, of the big block Corvette. This is a 1965. Everybody is pretty much familiar with a 1967 427, 435 horse. Uh, Corvette, which is very desirable. This was was the originator of the big block. This actually had a, a 396 cubic inch motor in it. At the time, GM had a 400 cubic inch maximum. Uh, so they, they were not going to put anything bigger than that and they weren't really making anything much larger than that. But this was gonna be their, their first race car that they started to produce. Uh, this car being a coupe, there were very few of them made. Uh, they made 400 and 749 of the coupes. South Florida is home to car lovers from all over, and it's also home to one of the very best tire stores anywhere. OK Tire Stores is family owned and operated since 1960 in Pompano Beach, giving you personal service and the absolute highest quality. Whether it's tire mounting, balancing, or tire truing, OK Tire Stores does it right the first time. With a broad selection of tires from Bridgestone, Firestone, Goodyear, and Michelin, OK Tire Stores will certainly have what you need. Custom orders are OK too, Passenger cars, classics, even truck and light duty trailers are covered at OK Tire Stores. Having the best reputation in South Florida means it's always best to make an appointment Monday through Friday between 7.30 and 5.30 and Saturdays between 7.30 and 1.30. So if you're tired of being treated like a number in one of the big tire superstores, come and see the best for all your tire care, front end alignment and suspension needs at OK Tire Stores on Dixie Highway in Pompano Beach. Beside the, the yellow car where we started uh, was a project that actually was started by Studebaker. Uh, the, the Studebaker Motor Division contacted a designer who his fame to claim at that point was the wide mouth uh, peanut butter jar, <laughs> which uh, any of you young enough remember sticking your finger in and around the, the neck of the peanut butter jar to get the last little bit out. He, he eliminated that for us and made the big wide mouth peanut butter jar. Uh, just about the time they finished the design on this car, and it is somewhat designed after the SSK 29 Mercedes, uh, Studebaker went out of business. Uh, he did have a friend in, in the car business as well, uh, who was a GM dealer, who said that he would be willing to market the car, but not with a Studebaker motor. 
So that was the beginning of the Excalibur and the, the Corvette connection. Uh, at that point, all the cars received Corvette engines, even though the Series 1, which is what this car is, uh, actually has a Studebaker chassis, suspension, uh, it does have a Corvette drivetrain. 15, 20 years later, is a Series 4 actually manufactured its own chassis, its own frame, used, used A-frames, uh, open axle differentials, as well as the engine and transmission from the Corvette and continued on with the heritage of the, the, the Chevrolet or Corvette connection with their, uh, their motor car. Most people will recognize the red car. It's the prancing horse. It's a, a Testarossa. Uh, the car kind of was made famous back during the, uh, the 80s, uh, during the time of the uh, Miami Vice series with Don Johnson. They, they started out with a, a, a 365 GTB but eventually became uh, uh, acquainted with the newer car, which was a Testarossa, and that would be this car right here. Uh, these cars were 12 cylinder. They were uh, a flat, a Boxster style engine, meaning that there were six cylinders to either side, and the engine laid flat on, on, on the bottom so that it didn't have much height. Uh, they were five speed transmissions. Uh, Di Damaso was making a car called the Pantera, uh, they had made a car before this called the Mangusta. Uh, it used a little bit smaller engine. They in, uh, used a Ford engine in their Italian design car. Uh, however, in the Panteras, all Panteras were uh, manufactured with three, 351 cubic inch Cleveland-based uh, uh, V8 motors. This car was produced and, and sent to this car for about, this country for about four years. Uh, back in the uh, in the 70s, uh, and then they they started producing the car again for about three years in the 80s. Uh, this is my little yellow Lotus. This is a 2002. Uh, it is a uh, uh, an anniversary car. It's a 25th anniversary. What made this car kind of unique is most of the the, the 25th anniversary cars were silver. Uh, 25 being the silver anniversary. Uh, this car happened to be produced in yellow with a uh, magnolia or yellow interior. Uh, it was car number 40 of only 100 produced. So thanks for uh, coming and visiting today.